Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show. He's Ramon, I'm Dan Fovacevic. What's up, Ramon? Not much, DK. You know, just a kickoff getting ready real soon. Big weekend coming up. Hey, let's roll. Yeah, week one. Week one of actual bleeping football. This show is sponsored always by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they are serving hot, fresh food around the clock. Get-Go Cafe and Market. Moan, week one for the Steelers means a pretty big challenge. Uh, in the Buffalo Bills, doesn't it? Are they the are they either the class of the AFC or right there with the Chiefs for that? Or do you see other teams kind of in there? Man, the AFC is mixed like big time. I think there's more quality in the AFC as opposed to the NFC. If you mention the NFC to me right now, I name you three teams. I think only those three three teams: Green Bay, LA Rams, and Tampa Bay. Yeah. You can roll the dice and say Seattle. I just don't think they're as strong. You can roll the dice and say Dallas, but Dallas got to prove it to me. No, that, Dallas. That, you yeah. know, so and well, everybody's high on Washington, but nobody loves their quarterback play. They love Fitzpatrick, but they don't love him to get them to the show. Um, and that's saying very respectfully, by the way. I heard he's awesome, too. Uh, the AFC, you mentioned, are the Bills, the team. Bills, you got Cleveland, you got Pittsburgh. Baltimore, Kansas City. Uh, who else am I leaving? No, I, I out would of that even group? throw. You know, there's people every, who every once in a while throw Miami into the mix. Miami also, and then uh, they, with, they throw the Chargers into the mix. Chargers. I keep forgetting about. Uh, them. Yeah, Chargers. no, but they're, they're easy to forget about. But they, I mean, <laughs> but they because they don't. You know, they don't jump off the yeah. uh, the, the, the page the, at you, but. The thing about the AFC is, is so many good quality teams. Even look at Denver. If Teddy gets right. That defense is really good still. That offense has some of the best wide receivers besides Pittsburgh that, you know, that they're got, they yeah. got much who's revamped their old line. Um, and then the thing to me about the AFC, you might see a whole bunch of 10 and 7s, 11 and 6s, 9 and, and, and 8 type of like uh, records this year because I even look at, let's say, Cincinnati. Cincinnati might be good enough to knock somebody off one week. You know what I'm saying? Like Cincinnati oh, might yeah. get six wins, but – they have a quarterback that can kind of wield them to a win. I don't know much about their defense as far as what it used to be, but look, the Patriots, young quarterback, but if he gets in that system, they may make a run or beat a team or two. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot that goes into saying somebody's going to dominate the AFC. Like, you got Kansas City, yes, but Kansas City can get beat by Pittsburgh, can get beat by Cleveland, Baltimore, like, who is really king in the AFC? Yeah, well, I think we can agree that the Bills are right up there. They're up there, yeah. Let, let's put it that way. I, I think w- that. between Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, the the way they've – yeah, their defense fell off a little bit last year because the defensive line play wasn't what it was, but they yeah. shored that up. That was their number one priority in it the was. offseason. And, Moan, as I look at all the different variables in this matchup, yeah, Pittsburgh versus Buffalo, the one that jumps to mind for me, is the Pittsburgh running game, and yes, I'm using that terminology, yeah. versus versus Buffalo because that was the Bills' weakness last year. And mm-hmm. Moan, Moan, there's nothing that can't be cured. There's no problem that can't be solved on a football field mm-hmm. by a strong running game. Strong running game help, helps out the passing game, helps out a, a quarterback that's not ready to start, helps out a quarterback that's not – it does everything that you're supposed to as big as the passing yards are in today's NFL. The run game still runs supreme. And I'll say this when we're talking about the run game between the two. I trust Pittsburgh's defense to stop uh, to stop Buffalo's run game more than I trust Buffalo's. That's oh, where I'm at. That's uh, interesting. As far as that, their defense is good, like you said. But if you exclude the fact that you got two young guys on that offensive line, which they're going to have to grow. But the simplest thing to do in this league is to run the ball. Learning protections are hard. It sucks. Man, I got this guy to that guy. Well, in the run game, I know I got slip here. If he moves, I still stay with him or the tight end is with me. Like the pass game's not like that. What better way to get these guys off and running other than to say, let's dominate the run game? Think about where we were when we were still trying to find out what is Ramon, what is Marquise, what is a David DeCastro going to do? Well, heck, we had a hell of a running back, running game, 
and we dominated in that. We went <laughs> forward. And then you see, I'm not saying then you see because those guys were still balling. You see the uh the 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 bumblebees, you know what I'm saying? You see A B, Emmanuel, and Martavis, and then the 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 steady Eddie and all of that was a really good run game when you transition to A B. You know, and guys that were beside him in the same context when AB finally took off, like AB has some amazing games, and that was he helped us in the run game. We helped uh, Ben and him in the passing game. Yeah, the, I mean the 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 rhythm between the two rhythm. that took place uh, for the better part of the past decade was something to behold. It's asking obviously way yeah. too much. Uh, for this group to pull that off with a very young offensive line. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Moore and Kendrick Green are Kendrick rookies. Green. Uh, Kevin Dotson's going to be a first-time opening day starter. That's huge. Um, and Tooks a... just moved over to the right to work with a guy who was out of the league last year. And Trey Turner. Trey and, Turner. And there's so many variables in play. But, but, yeah, the one thing on. that you will always take – Mm -hmm. is skill. And when you get down to who, let's say, for example, Moore and Dotson are, yeah. these are talented offensive linemen with actual physical gifts who are good at what they do. Mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin made a reference uh, a couple of days ago to Moore having a higher floor than we'd anticipated. I love that terminology. Wow. Can, you, can you explain to people what he meant by that? A higher floor, meaning for offensive linemen, for you to say that we're not even talking yes. about ceiling. We're no, talking about this is he, better. He walked on. He walked on the field and he expected, well, he'll be a project. And then you put him in those positions. It's like, oh, his movements is good. His footwork is better than we thought. His poise to take criticism and praise is better than we thought. And he's adjusting physically to the play he's adjusting mentally to the play when you have those the biggest thing i took out of my rookie year was i didn't know what i did not know meaning it took me an entire year to fully grab the playbook it wasn't until like that second camp that i understood oh that's what that means like i can admit that and most guys do so for them to say that his floor is higher than that like the elevator's going up with him that's They're not worried huge, about it, man. They're, They're not, not worried, worried about, about it. it. They it, don't it's, see. They don't. It's not just the physical stuff, bro. I'm sorry to jump in. It's yeah, not no. just the physical stuff. It's that they don't see a panic threshold, which is one of your concerns. Mm -hmm. Because if the game starts speeding up on you, oh boy, you're in trouble. There, everyone's in trouble. No lie, because some guys have that. Oh, what was that mm -hmm. look? You know what I'm saying? And for him, and I kind of figured that too, because A and M, right? Texas A and M is where he's from. They've had a history of putting linemen in the league at least, and this was also the secret. Of, of what that line was. They may have some guys that went into what, fourth, fifth, sixth round. I think they had like one first rounder this year too. But that those guys, because I watched SEC ball, all had like 30 plus starts. They're not, they're, they're not afraid to go into a game. When you got that many starts under your belt in college. Yeah, and th that's one of the things that, by the lot. way, that if there's a uniting factor to the three young guys across – the mm -hmm. left side from left to center. Even Dotson, yeah. Even Dotson and Green. They they all played their positions in college a lot. And that was yeah. why, if you'll recall, that they were okay with putting Dotson out there when Matt Feiler got hurt last year yeah. because they felt like Dotson had just played so yeah. much. He wasn't just some big body that they had mm -hmm. to bring into camp and teach the position to. Mm -hmm. He'd already played – the position so you have the offensive line the skill it speaks for itself at the yeah. other positions so, all i want to see out of that moan is find a way to develop some of that rhythm by establishing the run so because of those things you're saying uh coach t said about his floor being higher than we thought that means what i said earlier about the easiest way for him to grab his cleats and run on the field is to do those simple things that he's already used to running the ball that's going to be fine. Like I said, you're talking about establishing the run against Buffalo. If running was a, 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 a issue for them, stopping the run was an issue for them last year, well, guess what? They're going to still question it a little bit that first game. And if you put your hand in the dirt and say, stop us, they lose a little bit of that confidence. I'm not saying it's going to happen. And I know they're going to try to take advantage of those young guys too because guess what? When I had a young D-line, oh, you're going to get this work. 
Okay, like that was my <laughs> mindset. And they're going to try to do some run stunts to stop them. And as long as Coach Clem got those guys feet moving in one accord on the same page, they're going to be fine. When we come back, we're going to look at this from the quarterback's perspective. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. He's Ramon. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. And we're talking Steelers versus Bills this week. And we we talked a lot about the offensive line where this is probably going to get decided. Uh, yeah. and, and we talked about the importance of Najee Harris running the football and doing everything that he does. And I, I also want to talk about the passing game, but that also involves Najee. I first have a question to ask you that I don't think I've ever – asked before in any setting this head coach has no issues with having someone touch the football 35 times in a game does he and I, i'm not no. talking about the quarterback i'm talking about the running back position no none at all uh, and that honestly goes into the type of guy they're you know scouting um some people are like i feel like baltimore has that mantra finding a raven type of dude Pittsburgh's been doing it for a very long time, especially at the running back position, because you, the North, I don't think, changes. And I'm speaking about the AFC North. It doesn't change. It's like the run game pretty much runs the show in the AFC North. And, and when you're looking for a type of running back that you want to have five plus years with, if not longer, then you go after a type. And Najee is that type. Le'Veon was that type. Connor was that type. All of them. Think about them. Tough their own unique running style, their their physical as ever, and they're smart and multifaceted. Uh, Think about all the guys. Do you remember when when Lev was drafted and we were looking at his touches at Michigan State Mm -hmm. and like one of the concerns that came up was, whoa, that's way too much. He's going to get – and the Steelers are thinking exactly the opposite. Yeah. He showed us who he is at Michigan State. That's Coach Tomlin, like, you got to be conditioned for it. Like, they find guys that are conditioned for that type of stuff, and that might be a guy that has more carries. We know Najee couldn't take a rep off because why? The guy behind him probably could have taken his spot. So yeah, he that's got cool, a, yeah. You know, <laughs> at Alabama. Um, so yeah. it's it's right for the taking. But also look at Joe Mixon and friggin' Cincinnati. Uh, look at what, uh, what, what Cleveland has. I know Baltimore just – hit a bad bug, but what are they scrambling trying to do? They're trying to find the right type of guy. I know Le'Veon's on their practice squad right now, and um, they got to figure some stuff out, but they want right-minded type of guys. And you're right, Coach T is going to feed the beast whenever he needs to. It's a part of the game. You come to Pittsburgh, it's known as a running team since forever. Yeah, yeah, and you're not going to have him doing any protecting or worrying about the second Uh phase of someone's career. If he sees a game situation, and again, we saw this with Lev as the the best example, where you can get the ball as a running back, but also as a wide receiver. And Najee Mm -hmm. has done a lot of that Mm -hmm. in this camp. So to to that point, though, too, when you say like use them, like it's not in a a malicious type of way. Mm -hmm. It's not in a a, a do it in vain type of way. I never forget that Cincinnati game in which Le'Veon, I think, sprained his MCL or whatever it was on the sideline when he was tackled out of bounds. Like, yeah, it was a little bit vicious. uh, The 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 tackle there by Vontez, but yes, but but I remember like when he went down and how that situation really changed our offense. Like, I forget who came. Was that when D. Will came in behind him? He and did. D. Will came in behind him. And I'll never forget, though, just the importance of that position and having that type of guy. Like, we all felt everything deflate from us whenever Le'Veon went down because of what he brings to the table, the type of back that he is. And I know D. Will did a really good job. But with Le'Veon, which is why he never – he was important which is why I think it was important to go get a guy like Najee because when you have a guy like that that's ready for that type of warfare, James Conner was too. He just got injured, and that sucks for him. But I'll never forget when Le'Veon went down, it was really a feeling of like, man, this one sucks because it went through him. And Le'Veon loves that. Conner loved it. It looked like uh, Najee loves that type of action. So when you have that type of guy, you understand what that role is going to be. And every one of those guys have accepted that, that I block for and play for when it's the guy, you know what I'm saying? Like I do, you don't use them up and spit them out. 
there's a role to be played when you're Pittsburgh still a running back, and that's it really kind of goes with them for the most part. But there is also that rhythm, to use that word again. Yeah. And having Ben Roethlisberger, who, as we've been talking about extensively here, has known in the past how to use that run game yeah. to set up the pass. And I understand that that's the, it's the opposite now in the modern NFL. You use the pass <laughs> to set up the run and everything else We're here. We're getting back. <laughs> But it's starting to, yeah, it's starting to do that in places like uh, Nashville and and elsewhere and and yeah. New Orleans, where they say, "Oh, okay, well, we can do this because you are ready for the other thing." So the pendulum swings. Mm-hmm. I still want to see Ben be comfortable slinging it, and I don't just mean the short, the, yeah, the quick no, no, stuff no. that we saw last year. We saw that Ben's feeling good. We also heard that Ben's yeah. feeling good with his arm. Mm-hmm. Let's see some airing out, you know? I understand that's asking for the world out of this but, offense but, here, but that that that's the talent that's there, Moan. But you know this to be true, too. Most time when guys come back from an injury, it's not that year. It's the year after you're going to get that mm-hmm. best version of them. I think Ben's heard the critics. I, I know the wide receivers want to air it out, too. I still, until proven otherwise, think the strength is still there. Uh, and I, I I can't wait to see these guys because, again, yes, Chase Claypool can, you know, take a slant and go 70 yards. Juju can get open and get another 20, 30 yards behind it. Deontay is very dynamic. Also, James Washington. I feel like I got to name every single one of them every time I talk. That's right. And then <laughs> we even, even mentioned that Pat Fryermuth and Eric Ebron are, are threats as hey, well. Not to mention Najee. You know? Najee. So, <laughs> um it's one of those pick your poison types of uh, types of thing. If they think Ben is going to throw at the sticks, beautiful. I know he's going to air it out. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm looking forward to, honestly, more than anything uh, this coming Sunday. When we come back, a slice of life with Ramon. Speaking of Sundays, <laughs> welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's time for our slice of life with Ramon segment, and let's not pretend that Ramon's life will be about anything this weekend other than the National Football League being mm-hmm. back. What, what's a Sunday like for you now, Moan? You used to get up at what, like 6 a.m. or whatever, six, if you even six. slept? No later than 7 on a game day, man. Yeah, no later so than bad. I got to correct you, at least for the first month. Your boy is going to be on the baseball field, okay, on Sundays. But dad's got his priorities in order, everybody. Dad's got fall ball with the kiddo, okay? <laughs> That's only for a month, uh, and it's necessary because he's 13, moving to the big field finally. He's pitching at 60, and the bases are, what is it, 90 away or whatever it is, 90 mm-hmm, feet away? 90 feet, yeah. 90 feet. So uh, we actually got baseball this weekend, but you know what you guys going to have? I got that van outside, right? It's got two TVs in it. It's got internet, and it's got Apple TV. I'll be streaming games or either on my phone, man, the entire time. I'm mm-hmm. locked and loaded. I was going to say here, now, when you get to the point where you're able to just plop down on the couch here or whatever, uh, are you a red zone guy or are you rather just watch one game? I want to watch the hot games. If, okay. if it, that's, that's mine. Like, so that's red zone? zone. No, I don't. Oh, no, you like you, red you, you get into a single game. Really? Yeah, I want to watch the, the I want to watch the players develop. I want to see the ebbs and flow. I love like I was a film rat. Like I was one of those guys that I played well when I watched film. So I understand the game better when I can watch the entire series at least or an entire game. So if it's Pittsburgh versus Baltimore, I'm watching the entire game. If there's something I can snap away to at, at halftime, I'm doing that. I got to get to a point where I got like the multiple screens up because I like to see the whole thing. I'm not a huge fan of the red zone and, you know, just the clips like the scoring to me is I ain't going to say it's boring, but I don't want to see the finished product. I want to see what led up <laughs> to it. How they get there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see the play action. I want to see the 10-yard run that sets up the play action downfield type of stuff. Like, See, I, I'm convinced that red zone is something that's really pretty much just for gamblers and fantasy it geeks. Is fantasy. You yeah. and I are purists. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we watch whole games. But my Sundays, though, when, the, when his season is over is wake up, church, come back, and I'm looking at the pastor like <laughs> – <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it comes on at 12 here in Nashville, okay? <laughs> You know, so in Pittsburgh, they don't have that problem, Mo. You know, All the pastors want to get out, too. You know it. Then I go to a black church, and you know how we do, DK. We're going to have a service after the service, which is fine. I love the Lord, okay? But 
I'm, <laughs> I'm racing home, DK. And you know I either got to record it or I can either rewind it back to watch it. You know that to be true, which is why you're laughing so hard. I am. <laughs> no, it was actually service after the service is what got me. You feel me? Hosting the church and we got to oh, cook and host for them. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I've come to the realization, you know, asking about – you're asking me about um, what are my Sundays and weekends like. And I was telling my co-host this morning – and we were sitting around talking in the studio after the show, and I, I got goosebumps thinking about tonight's game, you know, the Thursday night game that's coming up and what the weekend unfolds. And, look, everybody's winning the Super Bowl today until Monday. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but watching social media, watching us do this, me and you do this, hearing, you know, the guys come out, how excited they are, and the fans and the culture of what football is, like – being in it, like you said, waking up at six o'clock, man, I got to go to the stadium. I got to stay tunnel vision. I got to stay locked in. Now I'm, it's my second year removed from the game. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the bigger picture. Like football season is a is a season. It's it's like a celebration. It's a break from the end of summer to like okay, now let's go. And I appreciate that. I see why fans get passionate and go over the top sometime and just it. I get, I'm getting chills just, just thinking about what the season actually means and the hopes and dreams and all of that type of stuff, man. I appreciate what football is, man. I was just in a group chat with Marquise, Al, and Dave, and, you know, we're, we're hearing from Al because Baltimore kind of, you know, went mm -hmm. through some stuff. And Marquise is always a football purist, man. We got to see if we can get him on and do this one day, he, and he will, okay? But, mm -hmm. like, watching him say, hey, Al, I know what y'all just dealt with in Baltimore sucks, but enjoy the game. And that's where I am with, like, my fan experience of it. Like, enjoy it because seeing what it is, it's a beautiful process, man. And I know everything that comes with the game. Guys accept that because the competition of it, the team aspect of it, the hopes and dreams that Coach T always speaks about, like, it's at its purest when it comes to the kickoff of the season. And I'm hype about it. Outstanding. I am now too. More than I was before this segment. Yeah. Moan, let's do this again next week when we'll have actual living, breathing football to discuss. We get, we get to let's overreact, underreact, <laughs> all the reactions, DK. Exactly, exactly. Tune in for the Ramon Foster Show every week right here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcasting Network.